How is it going, you lovely lot? Welcome back to Park to Prem. Today is the start of season number 12. We have a new key player in Erin Chelik. And to be completely honest with you, I feel bloody awful. But I've got my lem sip. Let's run the intro and get into it quick. My voice could go at any moment. Today, by the way, is episode number 93 of Park to Prem, and yes, we are excited to get into things, I think. We've got a brand new player, an updated version of the skin that I use as well, which inevitably makes me excited. It feels like a brand new game. And to be frank, heading into this Premier League season, where last year we finished second, I think it's going to be a tall order to repeat things. Top four, I think, is the aim. Also, while we're here, can we just discuss this? Uh, Misiak in the Media Dream 11. Yeah, the media might only have us down as seventh favourites to win the Premier League, having done the transfers that we've done. But we've got Misiak in the Media Dream 11. Just ignore the fact he's unhappy at the moment. Yeah, he's crying about the fact I wouldn't sell him to Liverpool last episode. He will get over it. And I'm going to hope it's not going to impact his performance too much because today's first opposition are the team that robbed us of a Premier League title on the last day of the season, last season. I'd love to get one over on them at home. But before we head into that game, I do want to do a little squad rundown. We've done these the last few years. You guys seem to love them. And here is the 11 that will be starting the first game of the season. There are a couple of players missing from the Steiner lineup, like Haddad. Of course, when it comes to goalkeepers, Haddad, normally the first choice, is injured for the next three weeks. That is not so good. It does mean that Lucas Schumacher is going to be the man starting in goal. He is unhappy at the moment because we've rejected various bids for him. Ultimately, I don't really want to sell him for £2 million. And whilst that is his valuation, he's also contracted for the next four years. I'm happy to keep him as a backup for the next four years. I'm going to hope that's not going to impact his performance. If he makes any clangers, I'm not going to blame it on him. It's just the fact he's sad. The third choice goalkeeper in our team is Callum Platt. And this is an interesting one because technically he's actually the fourth best goalkeeper. But crucially, this guy is homegrown at club, which is somewhat useful for stuff like registering squads for Europe. So I am sorry to Nikola Dukanovic, who we did recently get a work permit for. You're probably not going to be playing much. Really, I probably shouldn't have this guy here, but I'm kind of attached to him, so I'm just keeping him as a hostage. Now, when it comes to defenders in our team, we've got a plethora of really good talent. Of course, we've got elite wingbacks in Michael Bolton and Lee Min. At this point, I feel like you guys are somewhat familiar with these guys. They've been in the team for the last few years, absolutely tearing it up. Snedden, of course, joined us 18 months ago, got in the Premier League Team of the Year last year. I'm hoping he'll be able to repeat that. Kind of annoyed he wasn't called up for England's national team setup for the World Cup that just went by. And actually, while we're here, because I know I forgot to talk about it last episode, here is how the World Cup finished. Brazil won the World Cup, Netherlands losing, and in the third place playoff, Austria beat Iceland. Austria and Iceland making it to a World Cup semi-final each. That, I mean, that's not too shabby for them, is it? You'd think, given the fact my voice is going, that really I just focus on getting into the game. No, you get the rambling. So I've talked about three pieces of the back four. The final piece is going to be Huari. We picked up this guy for a really good price, I'd like to think. We signed him from Flamengo for £28 million, of course. He had the choice of us or Real Madrid. He's chosen to join us. I'm going to choose to believe it's not because we've just offered him more money, but because I have told him he will be an important player. And truthfully, he is going to be an important player. I wasn't really planning on signing a new first-choice centre-back, but when Gonzalo Rodriguez, who was already arguably the weak link in the back four, got injured with a broken ankle and we had some money to spend... It felt like a sensible thing to do. It does mean that Rodriguez is going to be out for the foreseeable future. When he comes back from injury, we could be waiting a while for him to be fit. Just noticed here as well, he got injured in our 12-0 win over Bedworth United. Do you know what I know about Bedworth United? They're our fierce local rivals. Yeah, I, why did I organise a pre-season friendly against our fierce local rivals? No wonder they snapped my centre-back shins. Now, when it comes to depth in the centre-back area, we are very much blessed. Of course, we've got Mosquera, who can play right back, a player who I was thinking of selling all of the summer, he is still here. Unless we get a massive bid between now and the transfer window closing, 
think he's going to stay here. In terms of left-back options, I think NDIA is the man who would naturally slot in there. Of course, over the last year, he's learned to play right-back as well, and at this point, he's kind of the jack-of-all-trades centre-back. Every team needs that man who can just play anywhere across the back, and this 22-year-old, with his either-footedness, I think he's just the perfect kind of fit for this role. Currently, he thinks he's an important player. Over the course of this year, I need to nudge down his playing status a little bit. And then in terms of other defenders in the team, we've got three players, all who are 20 or younger. The newest addition is Alex. This guy is a very good left back who's actually naturally right-footed, even though he's naturally a left back. I'll let you guys figure that out. To be honest, he can play on either side and is a very good, versatile player. Kenji fans might be in a little bit of shambles because I think Alex is better than Kenji and Kenji is, well, a somewhat similar player. It is great to have such depth in the fullback area. These are two players who I want to give game time to, but with Mosquera and NDIA also in the team, that might be a little bit tricky. And then when it comes to centre-backs, well, Matthew Martin is the fifth choice man. 19 years old, has two caps for Scotland. We've got loads of Scottish internationals in our team. I feel like the future of Scotland kind of rests in our hands. Maybe that's been a bit dramatic, but look at this. Four Scottish players in our ranks, three of them, 21 or younger. When it comes to defensive mids, this is an area I have a minor concern about when it comes to depth, simply because behind Mark Anderson and Ichikawa, Jao Victor and Riviere are the only other options right now due to Gonzalo Rodriguez's long-term injury. Of course, Riviere here, long-term servant to the club, but has seen his spot in the first team lost in the last year, Mark Anderson at 18, no, 19 years old, his birthday was last month. He is coming into the team and I think he will be the long-term replacement given his potential, given his consistency and the amount he's already improved during his time at the club. For naturally obvious reasons, I want to keep giving this guy as much first team football as possible. So the two previously mentioned players are kind of our more creative defensive midfielders. We need a rock alongside them. Ken here is the man who I'm hoping is going to be that rock. Signed for £40 million. Replacing fan favourite Fawns over the summer. Like the look of this guy a lot. Not really been afforded to opportunities during his time at PSG. I'm going to hope he performs to his attributes to us because he looks like he could be a phenomenal player. In terms of his backup, perhaps I'm hoping that Ichikawa is going to stay they fit because Jao Victor is a little bit of a drop off. When it comes to our centre attacking mids and strikers, of course, with our box system, it's safe to say they kind of blur into one. So many of our players can play as a striker or as one of the behind players. And I suppose it only makes sense to show these players all at once. I mentioned our young Scottish contingent. One man who I'm very keen to play a lot this year is David Gilliland. This guy, Scottish international now, 19 years old, came for our youth intake. I think it's very interesting to note, despite the fact he's been here years now, so our coaching staff have really got to grips with him. They're still labelling him as having five-star potential. Potential. Of course, that is relative to our current team. Our current kind of four and a half star ability players are players like Misiak and Celik, who of course are two of our starting attacking players. Very good players. If Gilliland can be half the player Celik is, I need to play him as much as possible to help him get there. So I mentioned Misiak already, alongside him, of course, Sam Fay. Moving back into the centre attacking mid position. Last year was a star man at striker, but with Celik joining us, he is going to drop back. It does mean he robs a first team spot from Pietro, who perhaps can feel a bit hard done by to be on the bench. Pietro's a weird player, though. I've really hoped he'd develop more after we signed him for £15 million. He's had two full years at the team where we've played him for 30-plus Premier League games. And whilst he's improved a little bit, he's not really improved that much. Another man who I wanted to say hasn't improved much recently, and then I've clicked on his profile and there's green arrows everywhere, Murphy and Goma, the 26-year-old, showing some really good signs of development. Of course, he is our captain. He's probably not going to be playing much for us. We just keep him around because he's like part of the furniture. I love this bloke. We've had him from the Vanarama National North. I want him to be here to hoist a Premier League trophy. That's the dream. So I have now mentioned all of our centre attacking mids. Let's talk about the strikers. Of course, Celik, I've already mentioned this guy. Phenomenal. £95 million, though. He's earning some outrageous money. He has to perform to these attributes. If he underperforms... I'm going to be fuming. And alongside him, of course, Roger Rojas, a slightly different kind of player, very, very quick, agile, nowhere near as technically gifted, but the boy can run and he's proving himself as a Premier League goal scorer. 20 goals two years ago, 19 goals last year. I'm going to hope he could maybe push up to 25 this year. That's a little stretch goal for the 21-year-old. Of course, still room to grow. You might notice here his average rating in competitive games this year is a 10. 
don't don't mean that's going to be staying like that after this next match. When it comes to depth striking options, we've got three players, one of them a new addition in Karim Kanate. Signed him to be a regular starter in January. Of course, he only joined us in the summer. We improved a lot between, well, those two periods of time. This guy, though, at 30 years old, is going to offer us some vital experience. Albeit, he's not been a great player at Stuttgart. When you look at him on paper, he should be a very reliable goal scorer on off the bench. Someone else who was reliable last year when it comes to goals, of course, was Sebastian Areco. This guy I want to continue to give first team football to was a real surprise package, signed as a luxury player really last year for £7 million. I know his goals scoring in the Premier League looks lack lackluster. He did get 17 goals in all competitions. He chipped in with a fair share. Conor Gagan is a man who, again, I signed in January like Kanate and probably won't be good enough. So uh, if this guy plays, I'll be surprised. And actually, there's one more player to mention, someone who I promoted between last episode and this episode to the first team, Diego. Diego, Diego, Diego. Look how good this guy is. 19 years old. He looks like he could be absolutely incredible. I realise probably should continue to make him available for the under-21s, but he's been promoted up a class. He's going to train with the big boys. Anyway, with that rundown done, I think we're ready for this first game of the year against Liverpool. I feel like I talked a little bit more about all the players there, but you know what? Now you know what to expect. Now you're fully prepared, and when it comes to Liverpool, thanks to the beautiful feature of this new skin, we can check out what there is to expect, because if we hit this button down in the bottom corner, we can actually take a look at, well, a scout report for Liverpool. I realise I don't actually have a scout looking at them. Pro probably should do that. And of course, given the fact it's the start of pre-season, there's probably not much we can read from our own performances in our last five games and their performances in the last two games. But Liverpool very likely to play their 4-2-2-2 system. And of course, the two players we've got to fear really are Roberto Estrada, who's incredible, and their other striker who scored four goals on the last day of last year to obviously win them the league, Brad. A bloody eight Brad. Anyway, we are going to get into this game. We are rocking that 4-2-2. Ichikawa and Huari making their debuts alongside Chelik. Three big additions across the core of the team. I think we've added some really good strength there. As for Liverpool, well, they've not changed their tactical system. They know how they want to play. We know how we want to play. I expect there to be goals in this one. And of course, it is worth remembering this is our last ever season at Butlin Road. We will be moving into our brand spanking new stadium in the summer. So this is the last year where we have to look at the empty stand on the far side, which I'll be honest, I'm quite grateful for. And I know some people are going to say, Jack, you could just reverse the camera. That, that's a coward's way out. And, uh, well, maybe we should be taking the coward's way out. Estrada's just scored from there. Marcus Aurelio to Sabozlai. Inside 10 minutes, they take the lead. It's not what you want to see, is it? Ichikawa not doing the defending we brought him in to do. And Estrada there for the tap-in. Okay, we've got a corner. Celic is quite good at corners. He's putting it in Bolton under it, half-headed away. Of course, Bolton, the former Liverpool man, dispossessed there, the right back. He should have a B in his bonnet, a point to prove. And at the moment, the point he's proving is maybe they were right to sell him because he's lost us the ball there. And now Sabozlai is getting it forward. Estrada to Roma at centre mid. Reblain. Reblain? Who knows how to say his name? All I know is he's bloody annoying is Brad. He's got to the byline. He puts it towards Echeverry. And Hari just about dinks it away. I do feel like last season kind of draws this false idea that we are somewhat comparable to Liverpool in quality because we finished on the same number of points. Let's be real for a moment. We still have the lowest wage spend in the Premier League. That might actually not be true anymore this year, but still one of the lowest. That is a certainty. They have a super team. We are a team full of believers, dreamers, trying to make the impossible happen. But actually, on paper, they're way better than us. So this is going to be a challenge. Last year, we struggled against them twice, although we did get a 4-4 draw, battling valiantly. In that game, we came back from behind. We need to do it again here. And Brad's just chipped the keeper. I wish Schumacher was eight feet tall. Then maybe he would have saved that one. Liverpool playing the ball through the middle. Huari put in a great tackle initially, the Brazilian centre-back, but it fell to Brad. And that is, that's just an annoyingly good fish. My players don't do that. Chelik, why can't you do that? I spent 95 million on him. I love the fact I'm turning on Chelik after 21 minutes. Yeah, I feel sorry for him. Okay, Hadel at the back for Liverpool. We know that we are going to press hard and try and force an error out of them here. They're going long. Huari misses it. Brad's going through. 
If he'd scored from there, oh, I don't know what I'd do. I'd cry, probably. Right, Bolton, throw in, throws it towards Faye. He can't get there, so Bosley now has it for them. The fact that Big Dom is still at Liverpool, by the way, this far in the future, it fills my Liverpoolian heart with joy. They've got, they've still got the ball, though. Uh, I don't like this. I don't like this, Echeverry. Stop it. Stop it, Brad. Great tackle, Lehman. Everything's fine. This Brad bloke is scary, isn't he? Sneddon keeps it alive. Lehman. Options inside. Misiak is one man. Of course, they want to sign Misiak. I want to keep Misiak because he can pull off passes like that. Sam Fay hits the crossbar. If we get one back in before half time, there's a chance. We have hope. Lee Min back to goal. Anderson. Surprised he's gone wide there. Also, Huari, the centre back, is taking the left third corners. I feel like I should question that, but I'm not going to question it yet because Sam Fay has scored. It's 2-1. We have a chance. Yeah, Huari, the centre-back, putting the ball into the box. Misiak nodded it, well, towards goal. Heddle could only save it. It fell to Sam Faye. It's a tap-in. He was only a couple goals off getting the golden boot last year. He opens up his account here, and could we get two for two in quick succession? Oh, my word. Sneddon has scored. The referee wants to check something here. This is the difference between going in level at halftime and going in a goal down still. Is it going to count? VAR is going to check it. The linesman's flag wasn't raised. The goal is going to be awarded. And from absolutely nowhere, it's 2-2. Two -two. It's I can't believe it. It, ca it can't be free, can it? It can't be free. Can it? Can it, Faye? Surely not. He's hit the woodwork. He was, it was offside anyway. Oh, wait, we've been given a penalty. Sorry, what's, what's just happened? I, I think VAR's... Sorry, what's happened here? Is VAR checking this? The penalty's been given. The penalty has been given. Who's over it? It's Sam, right? Sam. Big Sam. I trust you. We were 2-0 down five minutes ago. Faye steps up. He scores. It's 3-2 here. We've scored three goals in extra time at the end of the first half. I cannot believe what I've seen. I was worried about my voice going heading into this episode. Never mind now. What the dickens have we just witnessed? I feel like at this point I meant to talk about something to do with mentality and how this is the sign of a championship winning team. We are 45 minutes into the first game of the season. We need to calm down a little bit. Okay, well, I'll be honest. The way that that half just ended has kind of just taken the wind out of my sails a little bit. I need to calm down. We've still got another match to do after this, and that game is against Man City, so it doesn't get any easier. I imagine there's still plenty of action left to come in this game. We scored our goals somewhat against the run of play. Now from this position, with a makeshift goalkeeper in Schumacher between the sticks... We have to try and get a result. I love the fact I described Schumacher as a makeshift goalkeeper. He is very much a goalkeeper. It's not like we've put an outfield player in goal, but he does have a makeshift vibe to him. Aurelio, Faye can't put in a tackle. Aurelio going down this byline. Aurelio seems quite good, doesn't he? He got an assist for the first goal. He very nearly got an assist there, but for a Schumacher save. I take it all back. Schumacher's a god. Although, we do still have a corner to deal with here so Bosley whipping it in we're already 15 minutes into this half by the way although I mean there's still there's still 30 minutes left there's still lots of football to be played Rojas what a tackle by the striker okay you know what we're gonna make some changes on the hour mark here Bolton at right back's not been great I'm gonna bring in Mosquera I am also gonna take off Lehman who's not been great for NDIA I will also apologize for the fact that with this new layout that we've got and I think it looks beautiful I think the left back's gonna be blocked behind my head uh, so Lehman and NDIA you might not be able to see them I have swapped them. They're there in our hearts. Roger Rojas, I mentioned he got a 10.0 last game. That really was the kiss of death, wasn't it? He's on a 6.6 rating here. I'm going to take him off and bring in Kanate. As much as I want to bring in David, our young Scottish prince, I feel like it might be rushing him in to bring him in against Liverpool here. So for now, at least, he is going to stay on the bench. I think we'll make just the three changes. So Bosley, free kick. Tries to go short. We actually win it. Kanate, you've just been subbed on. You're quite quick. I know you're 30 years old, but you can run, my friend. There's players in the middle. There's loads of them. We're swarming forward. We're all over them. It goes all the way well, towards Mosquera at right back. And then he doesn't get it because it was a terrible ball in. And now Brad's bringing it forward for them. Bloody Brad. I hate Brad. NDIA, though. What a tackle, my son. Huari now with it. Maybe at fault for one of the goals we conceded, but let's not blame him here because Kanate is through and Kanate 
is going to score and make it 4-2 here. What are we witnessing? I don't know if this is the kiss of death right now. We are mentality monsters. The young Danish player in Anderson, the 19-year-old, playing in Kanate from deep. And what a finish that is. He's been on the pitch less than four minutes, I think, at that point. Okay, Celik, corner. We've brought him in for his set pieces. Sneddon's under it. It's looping. And it's dropped just the wrong side of the crossbar on the roof of the net. 15 minutes left here. Liverpool. I mean, they must wonder what's happened in this game. They were all over us. Look at how the uh, momentum shifted. They have been, well, growing in the pressure they're applying here. But it's not resulted in goals. If they get one now, though, there is still some time. Kanate. Kanate. I've just brought him into the team. He scores a goal on his debut. Now he's given away a penalty. I mentioned, didn't I, that we drew against Liverpool 4-4 last year. It couldn't happen again, could it? Could it? The shoe would be on the other foot this time because we're leading heading into the last few minutes. There's a corner here. Lucas Schumacher, all eyes are on you. The Greek freaking goal. Can't stop them scoring. So Bosley scores. Now it's squeaky bum time. Okay, I am going to make some changes here. Anderson is struggling for fitness. Riviera is just a slightly more solid defensive option. He's got really, really good marking and tackling, which is something that Anderson doesn't have. Elsewhere in the team, I have one more sub if I want to make it. I'm not really sure where I'd make that change. I suppose take it off Misiak is sensible. I might live to regret it. I'm bringing on David. Don't ask me why. The, the football manager voices in my head, they're telling me, David, this is time to shine. I am just going to slower the tempo slightly here. We can chill out a little bit to end this. Okay, how much added time have you got for me, football manager? Six minutes. Are we just going to see it out? I'm happy to have a really anticlimactic end to things here and for nothing to happen. There's three minutes left. Nipen, Salisu, Penna, Schumacher with the save. Right, now is the time to shout demand more. What a save by the keeper. What an awful finish by their player as well, to be completely honest. We do still have to deal with the corner. We've dealt with it. There's one minute left. Just see out the game. Blow the whistle, referee. It's an unlikely win. It's an incredible win. We've just beaten the champions 4-3. It might not make up for how last year ended, but I think it's a statement of intent. We're going to be in the fight with them this year again. I wish there was a custom team talk option here where I could say they might have stolen the Premier League, but we've stolen it today. What a win. You've made the doubters eat their words. I suppose that's close enough. Absolutely biblical scenes here. We go top. Thrilling encounter. Seven goal thriller. I mean, it is early days, but uh, we might have just seen the game of the year in the first game of the season. Apparently, Pietro Pellegatti's unhappiness is causing further unrest. Ugh, to be honest, it might be just time to sell him everyone. If he wants to go, he, he wants to go. He'd prefer to stay at Rugby Town, but he wants to speak to other clubs. Well, what's the issue then? He deserves a new contract. Uh, we, we don't have the money. We just, we don't have the money. If everyone takes a step back to think about it, he doesn't deserve a new deal. That is very <laughs> evil to say. He doesn't, though. He doesn't. The players don't agree. I might live to regret this. I'm going to go insist on here. This has gone on for far enough. I'm pleased with those of you that understand the predicament. None of them understand it. Uh, I've just offended them all. That's fine. Offended two of our best attacking players. Insulted the captain who's been here 10 years. He'll be fine. Everything's fine. I mean, if Pietro's got interest in him, I I'll sell him, but it needs to be for a reasonable amount. Napoli and Schalke on him. We'll offer him out. If we get bids, we get bids. Anyway, like I already said, we have got a second game going on today. My voice, I don't think it's starting to go kind of quickly. We've also got an away day to do, so I'm going to throw straight to that. We're heading to the Lille Kula Stadium. It's in Estonia. I've never been to Estonia. Uh, let's, let's go see if it's nice, I guess. Uh, yeah. Tallinn, off we go. Okay, folks, so for today's away day, we are heading to Estonia and we are heading to Tallinn, which is, well, the capital and it's on the sea. I don't know anything else about the place, so that's as far as the facts go. I feel a little bit better now about my facts because I've gone on Google and searched fun Tallinn facts. And the first fact on the first result is there's a beach on your doorstep. So it turns out I know as much as the internet about Estonia. Anyway, with that all said and done, I do need to find the football stadium. Uh, that's not the stadium we're at. I saw another one over here. La Coq Arena. That's, that, that's not our place either. I can't find the football stadium, but the good news is I knew this was going to happen. I got it here. Lil Kula Stadium. Wait, the Coq Arena is... The, the Coq Arena is also the Lil Kula Stadium. 
What a plot twist. You'll have to forgive me. I'm just going into the stadium immediately to verify this fact. If I now check, that that is the same stadium, isn't it? Yeah, can confirm we're in the right place. Now, good news here. There's footage here, there, and everywhere. First things first, inspect the car parking. Oh, tell you what, fantastically painted. They've even got football pitches in the car park. Fan bloody tastic. Love an away day as well, where we can do a lap of the stadium. I don't know why, I just feel like I'm doing a lap of honour. Here is the exterior of the ground. It looks pretty cool. What I will say, and I don't mean this to be rude or anything, it, it doesn't look like a stadium that should be hosting a major European final. I know I know it's only, you know, the, the kind of shield, well, the Super Cup thing. I was going to call it the Community Shield. Completely different competition, but yeah, it's it's got a bit of, and I don't mean to be it kind of reminds me of a swimming pool from the outside. Like, if you saw this, you're thinking there's a swimming pool in there. More car parking, fantastic. And more just grass football pitches directly outside the stadium. It looks like there's like a football tournament going on over there. Either that or it's the next generation playing. It could be Estonia's under eights play. It's probably not, is it? It's definitely just a youth football tournament. It does look like we encountered the extent of the car park and there's not a load of car parks. Although I say that, there is more, there's some good car parking. You know, they've made the most of the space available. I will say, I love the fact there are so many training grounds just around the stadium. I think it's really, really cool when you have big football stadiums and uh, directly next to it, there are facilities that can be used by the local community. So bonus points for that. Now, in terms of the view in the stadium, we've already seen it from the center circle. It looks like maybe we can walk Walk on the inside a little bit. Never mind. Also, is this the Estonia National Stadium as well? I mean, this makes me think it is because that is the Estonian FA badge. I only know that because of Football Manager. I'm curious if any of you at home developed like some pointless knowledge as a result of Football Manager, like stuff that you've scrolled through and like learned from. Uh, okay, this dot here is again is just the outside of the stadium. I'm being lied to. If you put a dot in your stadium on Google Earth, it should be in the stadium. I'm sick of this fake advertising. None of these are in the ground except this one. And actually, this is quite a nice high quality photo. Look at this. Now, I will say now, this stadium, yes, it's a bit generic in terms of it's the same on all sides, but that is as far as the generic goes. Look at the roof. Like, the roof looks like they ordered the wrong bits and it didn't quite connect together properly, so they had to stack it. But it looks great. Fantastic seat art. Love the, the blend of white seats up top and the, the green seats below. And it just has quite a cosy vibe. Anyone else getting a cosy vibe off this ground? I don't think that's just a me thing. I will say, in terms of fun stuff to point out, inside the ground, there isn't a load, but does there need to be? I take it back. I have found one picture inside the stadium. There appears to be some kind of national... FA bar here. This looks like all the banners they have from various friendlies and matches against other national teams. This is really cool, actually. You've got, like, the Armenia uh, banner there, Uzbekistan. I mean, you could just play a game where you spot them all, couldn't you? Uh, Faroe Islands, Ukraine, Italy, uh, OFB. OF is that... Is that Austria? I think that's Austria. Also, Estonia v Wales. That, the... I've never known what they do with these after international games. And now I know what the Estonia national team do. They just put them in a pissing bar inside the stadium. Oh my word, there's even more on this side. Although these, are these club badges? FC Flora. FC Flora. I feel like, I, is that a Romanian team? Flora. 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 Oh, it's, a, it's another rest. That's probably the team that play at the ground, isn't it? Yeah, that's def they definitely just play at the stadium, don't they? Well, this is just awkward, isn't it? I'd like to apologise for my lack of knowledge of Estonian football, but I, I don't know, you could definitely just do an impromptu quiz here. But with my voice going, I feel like we should probably go do a match against Man City. have just realised in doing all of that, completely forgot to give an actual score to the away day. The bar alone is one of my favourite things I've ever seen on an away day. I, that might summarise me as a person a little bit. I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. Now, before we head into the match against Man City, a little bit of team news. Uh, Pietro potentially leaving the building. We have had an offer of 35 million from Schalke that will rise to, well, an additional 15 million after one game for Italy. Bear in mind, this guy has already made two appearances for Italy, so it feels like he should get that. 50 million pounds for a centre attacker mid who's currently on the bench has not improved much in the last two years. I have a bit of a question mark over and is just unhappy. Feels like some really, really good money, uh, money. He was unhappy about joining Schalke in the summer. I've pissed him off so much, I think he's going to want to go now. So, fingers crossed, 
this will solve all our unhappiness issues. Besides that though, nothing else going on here, so we can hop into this game against Man City, and I am doing something controversial here, perhaps. I've made the decision to play the B team in this game. This is a midweek fixture, it is just a distraction ahead of our upcoming league games, and frankly, we're probably going to get battered by Man City anyway. So why not play some fan favourites? You know, Pietro's leaving the building, and Goma... He now has a right to play in the first team, and he's going to play alongside Gilliland in this game. Kanate, who scored ultimately the winning goal against Liverpool, will play up front for us alongside Areco. Across the back, we've got Alex making his debut, the 19-year-old who I promised was going to be a star player, so he definitely needs to play some games. Mosquera at right back. Um, Matthew Martin is going to make his first ever appearance in the team at centre-back age 19. This is probably going to result in a loss, but I feel like, you know, for the sake of showing some fan favourites, some old players, and also some of the new young players, it's probably not a bad idea. I'll be honest, I didn't realise the UEFA Super Cup had all the custom graphics. Look at this, they've got all the different trophies. for the, all the... This is bloody cool, isn't it? You can tell I don't play football manager much at the elite level, because I just, I forgot. Was this in the game last year for the UEFA Super Cup? I don't know if it was. I feel, Suddenly I regret playing the B team. This feels significant now. Okay, Man City are on the attack immediately. Uh, last year they finished third in the Premier League, one point behind us. They're a good team, they've got good players. They nearly scored inside two minutes. Right, Alex at left back, the new addition. He thinks he should be a star player. Today he's got to prove that he should be a star player for us. NDIA, Riviere, knocking it around the back. Martin, 19 years old. Last year he was playing for Hibs in the Scottish Premier League. This year he's playing on the big stage in Europe. I hope he's ready for this. Jao Victor, back to Alex at left back. And Goma, now with the ball for us, lays it to NDIA. There are options left, there are options right. In the end... He gives it to Jao Victor. Look at this. We're knocking around the ball for fun. Kanate finesses it. That was not far away. Man City playing the ball out from the back. Gvardiol to Ansu Fati to Haaland. I'll tell you what, when you say the names of their players out loud, bar the few players who I don't actually recognise, it's a bloody good team, isn't it? Rico Lewis at right back, stepping forward. Has an option down the line. That's Jeremy Pino. They've just got the who's who of football manager good players. Pino to the byline. Options in the middle. It deflects off the post and Martin blocks it. Love the fact that we're playing a UEFA Cup final. There's a gazebo serving food with plastic chairs, you know, in the corner. That's definitely a sight I've seen at many a, a major European final. You know how next year they're doing the big update to Football Manager? I really hope they update the gazebos and food trucks and plastic garden chairs. You know, I'm fine with it when I'm in the Park to Prem parks. When I'm playing in a European final, it's distracting. Engoma, Mosquera. Should have scored. He missed the target completely. It's been an all-action affair, hasn't it, to start this game? I've had my head in my hands one moment. I look back up and in Man City just have the ball. Pellegrino or Crino, even, to Ansu Fati, to Kavelic, who scores. First goal of the season, Man City break the deadlock. I know who Kavelic is as well. He's a Serbian centre mid, if I'm not mistaken, who I was looking to sign when we are in the championship, and he wouldn't join me. I feel like he was available for a few million pounds, and now he's just incredible, and I'm annoyed about it. Here he is, uh, 23 years old, valued at 175 to 221 million pounds. They signed him for 1.4 million pounds three years ago. I feel sick. Some would perhaps argue that I've set myself up for failure by playing the rotated team here, but you know what? We've given the unsung heroes and the next generation of our team a chance to prove themselves in the spotlight. Right now, they're not really proving themselves, but it could all change here because Alex the right back is going to take it short. He's going to give it to Gilliland, who gives it to Mosquera. He missed the target previously. He's not going to miss it this time. I, I, I forgive him for missing earlier. It's 1-1 after half an hour. Short routine. Gilliland assist. It was all the assist. Definitely nothing to do with this finish. I mean, when you see it from that angle, the keeper maybe should have done better. But let's not let that ruin the story. We've got one. Could we get two? With a team of comebacks. Areco. Left foot. Could put the ball in. 19 crossing. It deflects against the post and the highlight just ends. Okay, well, okay, that was a thing. Pellegrino for Man City. Zidane, by the way, on the far, far side. You can just tell it's Zidane from the animations. It's like they mo-capped him on the foot. Look at him being gestury. I should be gestury. I'm going to shout demand more. 1-1 still in this game, by the way. Man City bringing the ball forward. We Dre a go. Very good centre mid. Not as good as Jao Victor, though. He puts in a great little tackle. Alex, why is your face po popping up on my screen? I'm stressed. Lewis forward. Kavelia just scored. He scored again. 
He scored a Gumpy Human. I thought we were playing a horror game for a moment, the way Alex's face popped up on screen. The right back, or rather the left back, he was just there. I wish he'd been in a better spot on the pitch. Yeah, they smash it down the middle to make it 2-1. Also, I have noticed with Alex, he is, uh, well, he's black in the match engine, and he doesn't, he doesn't look black in his picture, does he? he do, it, we'll just live with it. I've had people mentioning it with Mosquera right back for the foreseeable future. Some of the regens do just get incorrect faces. But we look beyond it here at Rugby Town. Here is the man I'm talking about. Alex, do something magical. Jao Victor, the Brazilians linking up. Is there some Brazilian flair? No, it's deflected out for a goal kick. Man City... Goal kick. I want to believe we can just force a turnover really high up the pitch, just like that. Just like this. I've spoken it into existence. It's 2-2. Two -two. I don't know if you can tell I'm kind of high on lens and sleep deprived. I feel like today's commentary has been more off the rails than usual. Areco gets there. Whoever that is, Alex Eve, shocking by him at centre-back. He completely missed the ball. Okay, well, half-time is 2-2. Two -two. I feel like now I'm suddenly justified for the rotated team selection. The kids are doing all right. I'm going to continue to encourage them. Is it cursed that in this universe, Kobe Mainu plays a Man City? That feels very cursed to me. They spent £35 million on him as well. Christ. We're coming up to, uh, what, what's this now? 22 minutes played. I feel like I need to make more changes. Kanate, off you come. I could bring on Celic. I could bring in Gegin. I could bring in anyone. I'm bringing in Diego. I'm bringing in the 19-year-old up front. Don't question it. Elsewhere in the team, David's not having the best of games, but I feel like we should probably just keep him on. So, David, you can stay on. And Goma, off you come. I'm going to play Celic, attacking midfielder. I just want to see what this guy can do in this position. And actually, with him on the pitch now, I'm going to play him on the right-hand side behind Diego. Riviere's not had a good game at defensive mid, so I'm going to bring in Mark Anderson. And at left-back, not a good game either for Alex. But good news, Kenji is here to save the day. He's coming on at left back. While I was making those changes, I didn't pause the game immediately. So there is just a highlight playing. I'm hoping it's just going to be a completely pointless highlight. That would be very much the dream, unless we're going to score, in which case suddenly I might rethink all my subs. Mascara, give me some thinking to do, lads. Make something happen. The right back floats it. It's headed half away. It's just volleyball in the box. We've hit the crossbar. And Man City, I mean, they just about get it away in the end. I don't know what we just witnessed. I do feel like irrespective of what happens between now and the end of the match, we just have to be happy with how the team have done. Look at the match facts in this game. It has been even Steven, really across the board. We've given them a game with our rotated team. They've still got Haaland on the pitch. They've got Guerrero. They've signed Guerrero. When did Man City sign Guerrero? They signed for 64 million. Did I get a sell-on clause that I didn't know about? I did get some money over the summer and not know where it came from. I, gu I guess I now know. As if I couldn't hate Man City anymore. They've stolen one of our star young players that I wanted to bring back to this club at some point in the future. Guerrero. If he scores now, I'm fuming. I mean, we are going to now be going to extra time in this game. Guerrero's on the pitch. Haaland's on the pitch. That isn't good enough. Unacceptable. I'm just going to... You know what? Shouty, shouty. I don't care what they think anymore. Harlow, by the way, he's on a 6.2. He's been in Martin's pocket the whole game. If this game goes to penalties, I don't even know if we've got good penalty takers, to be completely honest with you. I guess we'll find out. I feel like with 15 minutes left, now I can actually bring in some of the good, uh, big guns. Misiak, on you come. Rojas, on you come. Diego, I'm not sure why he's on the pitch, but he's here having a good time. Jao Victor is knackered as well. Do I have another sub? Can I make another change? I can't. I, I guess he just has to stay tired on the pitch. Guerrero scored a few goals for Crystal Palace against me. If he scores for Man City against me, it's going to suck so much more. Where is he? Guerrero! Where, I'm, I like the fact I'm calling him like he's a dog. Pellegrino, the right back. Loose touch. Kenji with the tackle. We love that, but they do still have the ball here. Rojas with the tackle. Misiak, fresh off the bench. We've, we've made subs so late here that presumably they've made all their subs and their defence is tired. Now we can run at them. Mosquera, options left. Left, options right. He's already scored one banger. I thought he was going to score another. It's gone just wide. But it might not be the last highlight of the game. There is seven minutes and counting remaining in this game. Man City in possession at the back. Guerrero back to goal. Lots of onrushes ahead. Lays it all the way back to Batera. The centre-back now wide to Ansu Fati. Been on the pitch from the beginning. You imagine he's got to be a little bit tired. But well, if you're hoping for him to produce an error... He's not done it. He's, he's actually played it quite nicely to their keeper. Man City still with the ball there. Mainu, loads of space for him to try and make something happen here. Stepping forward, bringing it forward. Guerrero to Haaland. What a terrifying combo. 
Prestiani now on the far side is floating it towards players. Martin wins it though. Roger Rojas, you are quick. You are fresh legged, my friend. Run. Run like the wind. Run like the wind. He's going all the way. He pulls it to Misiak. It's 3 2 here. We might have played a blinder. We might have had to play an extra 30 minutes, but we're ahead against Man City. I'm not entirely sure why I was willing Rojas to shoot here. I mean, answers on a postcard, please. Why did I want him to shoot at the end of this? If he shoots there, it just goes flying over, and it's one of those annoying football manager highlights. Instead, he pulls it back to Misiak, who scores. There's five minutes to see out. I was thinking about making tactical changes, but then I thought it would just cause issues, so I've stayed with what we're currently playing. And it could now cause us issues too. Uh, Man City are on the attack here. Am I celebrating too soon? Mosquera wins it. We have made Haaland look like a small child in this game. Rojas pulling the strings out wide again. Players in the middle to aim for. On this occasion, he can't pick one out. Man City now looking to launch a counter-attack of their own. This is like a basketball game. The game so open. They've got players queuing up in the middle. Guerrero, Martin reads it. Celic now with the ball. Hasn't had a moment of magic yet. Maybe he can provide... Well, I was going to say something here. We've lost the ball again. They're coming forward. Why is this game so open? Diego, the 19-year-old, he looks pretty good there, doesn't he? Misiak, he has one goal. He's stepping forward. He's dancing. He lays it to Aaron. It's 4-2. It's game over. Misiak is the hero. I feel like the second half of last year, Misiak really came into his own and really stepped up his performances. In this game, he has single-handedly changed things. Really intelligent pullback. And at 4-2, three minutes left. This game's done. It's over. Come on, give us give us the trophy playing. You know, I want the trophy cutscene, football manager. Give me it. Inject me with it. We're going to win the Super Cup with our B team. Ignore the fact that all the star players scored in extra time. The dogged work, the leg work, it was done by the runts of the litter. But those runts of the litter, they're growing into good players. I feel like there's an analogy, a metaphor here, and I've gone too far with it. Let's just enjoy the confetti, shall we? It's, it's 4-2. It's 4-2. We've won. Let's get out of the game. I'll tell you what, going into this episode, my voice was struggling. After the two games we've had, I need to go rest it again. I'm going to have to go get more lens in me. I've got more videos to record for you guys before I go on my holly bobs. So, uh, yeah, I I'm going to be staying busy, I guess. Missyak with that man of the match performance, 8.6 rating for him. I know it's a little bit odd when you kind of look across our entire team that he is one of the players with the highest star ratings. But in terms of raw performances... So far at this club, he has been putting in some of the best. I'll tell you what, usually at the start of the year, you have a nice, relaxing, low-stakes start to the season. That's not been the case today. That was bloody terrifying. Now, in terms of the plan for next episode, I think we're going to come back for, uh, well, our first games in the Champions League. Quite when they're going to be, I don't know yet. So rather than promise you something that I can't guarantee, I'll just pretend I don't have a clue what we're coming back for. It's a mystery. Come back tomorrow to end the week. There'll be something happening. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed recording it. Sometimes you have a Football Manager episode where at the end of it you sit there and go, that was a bloody good episode. I have that vibe today. If you do have that vibe, go down below the video, leave a like. Like I already said, we're back tomorrow to end the week. I'll see you guys for that one next time. Take things easy. It's me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.